I mean, I personally want to know what I look like up there. Oh, you might I, think it's, I think it's just narcissism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is one way, one way to put it. Okay. <laughs> but it is a critiquing aspect. And Aha! I knew I had ten. <laughs> That's one of the most nervous. It, it, so it'll laugh? Yeah, because you anticipate going. Oh. That'll give me the best practice. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, this is targeting your audience, so the more you can tell me about your specific audience, that more helpful it will be. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming to my lecture today down First, I'd like to thank you, but I'd also like to congratulate you because you guys are here because you are either recently engaged or you're in a long-term serious relationship. So you guys are looking to move on to the next stage of life, most likely in marriage. And with that comes relationships. Now, <coughs> now you also want to keep that relationship healthy. And that's where all is love, all is fair, and love and war. Now, a wise man said that being in a relationship is like being on a boat. Each individual is responsible for his or her half of the structure. Now, with that being said, you can just imagine, not sure if you ever canoed before, but you both have to work in harmony. That one person has to give commands, one person has to listen, and it has to go vice versa. Now, if you don't work in harmony, you're going to rock the boat. Now, if one person is barking orders, that's going to result in an argument and severe rocking. That one person is going to be completely upset and it's not going to be mutual. Now, once again, as I said, if you take turns giving orders when necessary, that one party says, hey, listen, you do this, and one person is receptive and so on. So I think you understand what taking turns means. Now, once the argument is started, you have to figure out how does this argument end. Now, if you get into this argument, and all you want to do is just drop the argument with no resolution, you get nowhere that if one person starts bickering, use the word bickering, bickering at the other person and just says, you know what, you know what, you're right, just get it over with. You, you have not met a resolution. Now, also when it comes down to resolutions, sometimes one party will compromise and give in to the demands of the other. Once again, you aren't really reaching any means to an end right there. All you're doing is just you're, you're backing away. You're just saying, you know what, I have nothing to say to you that this is, this is just over. Nothing is reached once again. Now, <coughs> how, you, how you want to resolve an argument is just work out fairly. You want to both talk to each other once again, figure out what was wrong, what happened, come to, come to an agreement, come to an agreement on how to come back to calm seas in the argument. Now, how this tests your relationship and the skills that are utilized when you are arguing is patience, active listening, and communication. Those are three skills that you definitely need, let it be in this relationship when you're going to get married or just in your daily life. So this is everything. And as you look at this boat right here, I mean, you, got, you see how happy they are? You don't want to smack each other with a paddle. I'm just saying in the long run that that's not how you want your argument to be, that just, just keep moving on calmly. Now, Fighting in the art, fighting in a relationship is actually a healthy thing. Now, why is it healthy? Because it shows that each individual is comfortable enough to show their point of view. Now, like I said, that I'm not sure how long it took each of you guys to become engaged, but most likely you had to go through the honeymoon period where everyone was just on their best behavior, just doing whatever it was to keep you happy. And like I said, now when you start fighting, it shows that you actually are more comfortable with each other and letting each other know the feelings, the feelings that you have and everything that, um, that irritates you. So now, now that you've decided, we'll use the word decided that you want to fight in this relationship, there's three rules that you have to deal with. Don't play the blame game, say what you're thinking and feeling, and actively listen to your partner. Now when it comes to not playing the blame game, <coughs> the reason you don't want to do this is because when you start placing blame on someone, it's similar to throwing alcohol or gasoline on a fire. That really you are not going to to smolder, to smolder it with gasoline. It's just going to flare up even more. Now, with that flaring comes the spiking and anger, and it's going to lead to an, a myriad of unfair and exaggerated comments that I think many times people 
when you get upset, you say things that you might not mean. And, um, and yes, that you're going to hurt the other person's feelings, and that's not going to be good. Now, when it comes to not blaming, what you need to do is express your own feelings. Use the words that I think I feel. I think that you were wrong because of this. I feel that we need to do this together. And, and don't use not, don't use always and never that you always are doing this. You never are doing this. That once again, you don't want to place blame on your significant other. Now, <clears throat> just remember that when you are placing blame, most likely you're at fault for something as well. That it is not just the other party who who is wrong, who is wrong when a fight happens. So just remember that there's no need to place blame. That usually, if you are placing blame. It is because you have done something wrong. Now, once again, once you guys have actually started talking because of this, you have to speak your mind clearly. Now, you have to say what is on your mind because we can't read minds. That I don't know what any of you guys are thinking right now, and if you don't, if you didn't tell me anything, then I'm not not going to be able to help you. I'm just imagining, say, if we were in a fight, that I can't read your mind, can't tell you how uh, how I can make things better for you. So once again, with uh, can't read your mind, if you hide your emotions you and use obscure comments, the significant other won't actually know what you're talking about. So once again, you just have to speak your mind clearly, because if you don't speak your mind, they're not going to know the thoughts, and you can't be afraid to express them. And with expressing your thoughts comes with actively listening as well. Now, when it comes to listening, don't just make your point and focus on what you need to say next. You have to say your point, listen to what the other person has to say to you, and just go back and forth. It has to be a two-way street. Take turns speaking and remaining on the same page with the person. You're significant others. Now, once again now, you guys are engaged or you are in a serious relationship. The next biggest thing is living together before you're actually married. You have to decide if that's what you want to do. Now, there's many different reasons to live together or not to How live together. How much more you got, Louis? Um, I have a small part if I would love to wrap up right now because once again that when it comes to living before marriage there are many different reasons that it's laden with relief, religious beliefs, family morals, per personal preferences. Now when it comes to living together there's no statistics that say whether or not your relationship is gonna, gonna be good or bad. Now <clears throat> Some of the things that I was going to say about living together is just that if you do live together, you get to you get know the little nuances about your significant other. That are there going to be things that irk you that you didn't know before? That, once again, just top secret. Now, if you live together, it's just going to be out and open. Money, all relationships revolve around money and responsibilities. So you have to figure out, we just talked about chores, who's going to do what now, it should be 50-50 with everything, but just know that there's going to be different chores that need to be done. And I was going to talk about personalities, but you guys should know about, uh, about your other significant other personality. Are they a control freak? Are they a show off? All you needy or a pushover? Now, if they are, well, that's up to you now. With all that said, and I hope that I've been able to help you guys decide <coughs> decide if you want to say I do or I don't when it comes down to it in the long run. Okay, you do. Okay. <coughs> what made you think of this? Are you getting married? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> do you do counseling? No, not no. that either. Uh, let's see, I came up with this. I was just looking at articles. Actually, one of my friends, she writes a column for, for, um, for a paper back in Delaware. And it was just interesting to me. So I went and pulled some of the topics that, that she had and just, uh, <coughs> just did some research on it. Oh, OK. Well, I, I asked you because you were running nine minutes at that point. Oh. So if I if you'd have gone the, the whole way through, we would have been talking. Yeah, to yeah. That that mm -hmm. honestly, when it when it comes to this, that I actually did not did not practice this. So I just came up with information and um, and just made my slides. And this was my first month, so I know. Oh, okay. Well, you had a couple of spelling mistakes. Uh, well, confusion. Confusion. Yes. Uh, the one.